All right. Shirley, are you still here with us? We got about four minutes till you get started. Yes, I'm, I am. I'm here. So I thought we would take this time to tell everybody a little bit about yourself, because if they haven't heard of you, they need to know how much you rock. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't like talking about myself, about myself, but we could do that. I, I want to, I love talking about you, because you are a success story that, that we should all um, look up to. So tell me, when did you start your first online store? My first online store was, I think, 1996. Oh, wow. And then it was on some platform that I can't even remember. <laughs> I just sort of blocked it out. Mm -hmm. It was so bad. So, um, and basically, uh, our first experience was my brother putting in my, uh, so we used to be, um, uh, mail, we used to do mail order catalog, and so my brother put my mail order catalog, basically he scanned it and put it up, and I was scratching my head wondering why people weren't ordering from us because it was really, really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go back to the Wayback Machine, you go, oh, I see what she's talking about. <laughs> so, um, and then we went on to... Uh, you know, a uh, platform that I will not name, and um, and that didn't quite work out as well. You know, every time I breathe or sneeze, it cost me money, right? Mm -hmm. And the, and really, the the straw that broke the camel's back with that arrangement was, I was just wrapping up the shipping uh, uh, st uh, structure. You know, the how you know five ninety five, six ninety five, the the shipping rate, right? And I asked the guy, go, can you just change this from, you know, nine ninety five to seven ninety five? And he goes, okay, I can do that. I can do that. Two weeks from now, it'll be six hundred dollars. And I go, <sighs> say what? <laughs> so you have to, you know, kind of remember back in the day, there's not many people doing this as well. But still, you know, mm -hmm. then that's what my analogy was. I breathe, it cost me money. So it's like, forget it, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's when I, you know, discovered Yahoo, and I was like, oh my gosh, and and um, this is so amazing. I could teach myself how to do this. And mm -hmm. that's what I did. I forced myself to learn uh, how to, you know, work with a template and all of that. And as I say, the rest is history. And, you know, over time, we had Yahoo developers, designers improve and design the site. You know, but the skeleton of it, which, which was important to me, was that I was able to manage it myself on a day-to-day -day basis because... You know, I'm I'm a little nutty. I like to make changes in the middle of the night. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> so I wanted to be able to do things like that. And especially like when you're a parent, or if you're just brand new to opening up a store and you're working a full time day job on top of trying to start a business, you don't want to have a site that you can't do something with whenever you want to do it. Uh, absolutely, and you know, you know, there's so much conversation about testing, right? And if you can't do a full-on test, then you could do, okay, I'll make a change to this and see what happens, you know, in the next two days, right? And you could do things like that with Yahoo and uh, have that flexibility. And, you know, speaking of having kids, I have three kids, so, um, and you, you, you eat out the time that you have whenever you have a chance, right? You, mm -hmm. You're working all the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have six now, thanks to my lovely husband. Wow. And four grandkids. And four grandkids now. <gasps> Congratulations. Oh, yeah, thank you. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love being a mom. I love being a grandma. And when I hear my little twins go, where's grandma? I love it. I just melt and my heart melts. But but you're right. We want something that's fast and easy. And, you know, one of the reasons I love uh, Yahoo is because my 83-year-old grandfather is on Yahoo. <laughs> so you have the grandpa test, right? You know, yes. Some people have the grandma test, and you have the grandpa test. I do, I do. I mean, this man works sales all his life, you know, and 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 now you expect him to sit down and retire, and you know, he he's missed it. So it's like, here, Papa, try out this, okay? You know, so I love it. So anyway, that's just a lot of fun, and I love talking about that. But all right, so let's go ahead and. Oh, wow. You did a beautiful job. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and get to this webinar. Sorry, we've got a donation that's absolutely wonderful, and I cannot thank you enough. So um, I, I will discuss that 
very soon. So let's get on with this one, though. All right, we are here to talk about growing your e-commerce business on a small budget. While I introduce Shirley, I want you to take your fingers, and I want you to stretch them out really good, you know, like almost make them crack, because you're going to be typing a lot this hour, okay? So if you are just joined us, welcome to the New Life event. My name is Shauna Siegel. I am the CEO of One Choice for Your Store, the host of Ecom Experts on Webmaster Radio, and I love education. Education is power so if you want to learn more about me just go check out my bio because we're here to talk about the new life event my favorite favorite subject um, special thank you please make sure to say thank you to our speakers if it wasn't for them we wouldn't have this event and they really make this event so amazing but you guys do as well if it wasn't for you being out there and spreading the word the speakers wouldn't come back and this is our fourth event and they keep coming back because they love you they love you because you're out there spreading the word, so please keep doing it. We are giving some amazing prizes out, and don't forget our daily grand prizes, which are so very cool, and you are a winner just by being here because you are getting amazing education that will help you to grow your business. It will help you, and as Kat, um, Kathy Simpson keeps on saying, a lot of the stuff the first time she was here just kind of went over her head, and then the next time she came, a lot less went over her head and the next this time she's catching a lot more stuff so if you're brand new to the new life event and you're like wow this is overwhelming just keep on listening because it's going to make sense and it's going to keep making sense all right so twitter-winner.com go to newlifeevent.com uh, talk to people about it make sure you've got the hashtag NLE that's very important for winning prizes you can use the tweet chat chat room it's so awesome it automatically puts in that hashtag for you um, we got a great schedule we did make a slight change for 5 p.m. because Chris Malta had some uh, problems this last week with his health and he is doing better now but he is resting and trying to catch up so uh, we did make a slight change we'll give you a Yahoo store demo show you how easy it is give you a free coupon for four months and and then We'll make it easy. All right. So if you have questions, um, Twitter me at New Life Event or ask questions on the right hand side. I'm going to pass on the controls over to Shirley and say thank you again for joining us and giving us your time on the weekend. We really, really do appreciate it. So thank you, Shauna, for inviting me to uh, share with the New Life community um, members today. I'm really excited and. Um, Normally, I don't have a lot of um, graphics on my presentation, but I included just a little bit. And but I thought that the New Life community members would like to get more meat on the bone to chew on, uh, rather than have a pretty plate. So, with that, uh, let's dive in. Next slide, please. Okay. So, the thing about e-commerce, right, is that it's not really about the technology and in, initially when I first started my business that was the biggest hang-up that I had right it uh, is worrying about how to learn to use the computer and and the back end of platforms but it's really my, my take on it now having gone through it uh, and being in e-commerce in the last 10 years um, is that it's more about understanding the merchandising and the way your customer consume your products if you want to be successful online and in retail, this is the main key piece that you need to nail down. I'm often asked by store owners, what is the secret formula at American Bridal? And not to be coy, but really there wasn't any secret sauce. I would say that our success was an accumulation of retail and merchandising experience over the last 20 years. The key to effective marketing and growing your business is to understand how your customers shop and use your product. And the face time that I had when I was in retail really helped shape my marketing strategy and techniques. And I, I will share as much as I can in the short time we have here today. So online shoppers are typically, you know, uh, when you're in retail, right, you're, they walk into your store and you can sort of study their um, pattern. Uh, Shauna, I'm still on the um, merchandising. Yes. Yeah. Screen. So um, you can understand, you, so you, can, you can study how they um, visit your store, how, what their ex consumer, their customer experience is. But online, you don't have that, right? They, they come in from different pages on your website and your goal 
is to try to get them to see as much of the pages and products that you have. But typically, most websites, the average um, visits are like four or five pages, you know. And so the, the your question you're you're always asking yourself, if not if you're not actively asking yourself, is how do I increase my AOV? Your average order value. How do I get them to see more products? This is the page views, that metrics that you look at when you're looking at your analytics. How do I get them to stay longer on my site, which is the time on site metrics? The longer they stay, the higher the probability that they'll buy something. It's just like you know being in the casinos, right, in Vegas. The longer you're sitting at the table, the higher the probability the house will win. So in this particular case, you're the house, and you're trying to find ways for them to stay on your site longer so they'll buy something from your site. So merchandising is about understanding the product mix, as we've said before. How the product appears on your site, what type of features and options you should have, how to cross-sell and showcase related products, how to price products, an assortment of products so that you have a mass appeal to your visitor and that would entice them to buy something from you. To be able to do all, to, to be able to do the above, right, which is merchandising and understanding your customer, how your customers think and shop, you have to understand, you know, like I just said, you have to understand how your customers think. And another way to say this is to put yourself in their shoe. And how do, how would you use this product if you weren't the person selling it, right? How, uh, what is, are you buying it? You know, questions you need to ask yourself. Are you buying it as a gift? Are you using it yourself? So these types of questions, right, help you formulate how you should design your website, how you should lay out the products, how, what products should be positioned next to another product. It's not just about uploading product feeds after product feeds from your dropshippers or, you know, or when you stock and buy merchandise. It's about knowing that the products next to each other plays on each other and help each product sell. So with that, let's dive into the next screen. Um, thank you, Shauna. So the biggest challenge that I feel that most entrepreneurs have, and this is what I went through, is scale, right? Where it be marketing or your operations, fulfillment or warehouse, accounting, right? Trying to do it all well and being able to afford to do it all well. That's the key problems that um, most entrepreneurs face. You know, whether you're small or you're big, you know, scale is always the issue, right? Uh, working within your existing resources. So if you're like most small business owners, you when you first start out, or even if you've been in it for a while, you set aside a, a set of capital to invest in your business. Whether it's 10000 or 100000 you have to figure out how to budget and allocate this investment. For the purpose of today's webinar, we're going to talk about, we're going to take, the, I'm going to take the position that your website's established, it's live. We're not going to cover platform research or market research, but we're going to focus on how you can grow your business, whether it's you're doing $10,000 a month now or 100000 what you want to do is grow it and take it to the next level. One of the key things when you're formulating um, um, your goals, right, is uh, setting your marketing plans. And in your marketing plan, you should have your executive summary. You should have your mission and your action plan. And basically, you know, your executive summary is the overall key points. It's the roadmap of where you want to go with your business. It's really as simple as that. Where do you want to go? And what does that look like? The mission is what, why you do what you do. So for example, with that, right? So people sometimes get that a little mixed up. Um, the, a good example of this is you could say mission is I want to be the, provide the fastest shipping and the largest selection of books online. Sound, you know, sounds like you know someone, a company that we know, right? Or your mission could be, I want to sell a million dollars in 2011, or have 200,000 fans in Facebook by July 2011. So those are the kind of examples of what your mission can be. Not to be confused with, um, oh, um, you know, I want to save the world kind of mission. One of the things that I want to cover is what people confuse, right? Um, is the of in in their strategy is their mission 
or, or their activities and their action plan. So they, what people fail to do in a lot of cases, and you know, big and small companies, right, is they confuse their marketing strategy with the things that they do, the tasks that they do. And they think that what they do is their strategy. So I'll give you an example of this. How many of you woke up this morning after a late night of looking at your analytics and said to yourself, I need to send more emails because sales were slow last month? Or you're, you looked at your analytics and you said, oh, I need to create a, uh, you know, you read an article and you go, I, I need to create a fan page. Oh, I need to write more articles. See, the, all of these things you do need to do, but these are activities. They're not the strategy. And so doing them separately or, you know, as you go is the, is the weakness that um, most entrepreneurs have, right? You know, where, um, you know and, and I'm exactly like this, right? You know, wake up and I think of something and I think that I'm brilliant, then I go do it, right? But these are just things to do. It's not a strategy. So what is a strategy then? The strategy for your marketing is these three components. You want to let people know that you exist or your website exists. You would want a systematic way to capture the information about your target audience. And then lastly, you want to be able to keep in contact with them. You want to be able to connect to them and communicate with them. So um, then there's also the uh, topic of budget, right? And in your marketing plan, it's important to include your budget and your sales goal. So typically people ask me, how much do you spend um, on your marketing, right? And in the past, when I used to run American Bridal, I typically spend between 10 to 15% of my sales revenue on marketing. So, for example, if you do 100,000 a month, right, then you should typically be secure enough to spend about 10 grand in your marketing efforts. And we'll cover what those marketing efforts will be in a few more slides. But the key thing to um, in discussing about budgeting, right, is to know, is to figure out which resource that brings in, brings in the most return for your money and to keep reinvesting in that and reallocating all the time. So this is easier said than done and it takes a lot of time. There's no, there's no way, you know, easy way around this. It's time consuming it's, you, and the key is to be consistent. So however you decide to allocate your budget, the key takeaway from this screen is however way you decide to allocate your budget, you need to make sure first and foremost that your marketing activities are cohesive in its form and it portrays a consistent branding and messaging to your target audience. So we'll talk a little bit more about action plan as we move forward. Uh, next slide please. So on this slide, you know, which touch very quickly on market research. And we're going to assume that you've done all of these, right? You've shopped your competitor. You've, and by shopping your competitors, we're talking about you've purchased products from them. You've returned things to them. You know, you've studied their website. You know all the ins and outs about your competition. You know, you know the top three competition that you worry about and stress and keeps you up at night, right? You know their navigation. You know their, what testing they're doing. I mean, you know their website, you know, as well as they do. When they sneeze, you're there to say, bless you. That's how well you know them. So, and then the same thing, right? You do a SWOT. This is like doing a SWOT analysis. You're evaluating the strength, the weakness, the opportunities, and the threat. You do this exact same thing on your own website. You formulate, you know, you, you figure out what is, um, what is your strength, what is your weakness. And, you know, you, this is, you know, one of these dead honest conversations, you know, um, that you have with yourself. It's very soul searching, right? And the key is to just do it. You know, just do it. And then with all of this, your goal is to define your market position, right? What is your unique value position? Why should customers do business with you? You know, why are you so great? Why are you all of that in a bag of chip, right, as they say? So that's what you're trying to figure out with market research. And if you don't mind, next slide, please. This is one of my so, favorite parts. Yeah, okay. 
<laughs> so take it I, away, Shauna. All right, Gerilyn. Um, I, I might have a little difficult time with your last name, Fustel, I hope it is, but you're, who just tweeted, your website mission is to always think positively, know that your business will prosper. Learning great stuff here. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, so what, is, so what did Gerilyn win? From me, from me? Yes. She wins a two hours e-commerce um, consultation. Congratulations. Oh, this is, this is going to be phenomenal. And you are one lucky, lucky, lucky person. Um, I hope you do uh, enjoy it and let us know all the things that you learned from that. And thank you so much, Shirley, for donating that wonderful prize to our winner. I, I'm looking forward to working with um, Gerald, Gerald? Geraldine. Geraldine, thank you. Thank um, you. I look forward to working with you, Geraldine. So let's speak to uh, after this. The, um, yep, the go webinar. to twitter-winner.com, click claim your prize, and we'll pass on the information to Shirley. All right, go to the next slide. Perfect. By the way, awesome. Shirley, um, I'm going to stick with this file. I never got the other one, but this is working, so I'm just going to stick with it. Okay. All Perfect. right. So the next thing is before, again, I'm really a uh, stickler about, you know, you know, buttoning things down, right? So I want to make sure that before you spend a dime, that you, you that you have these aspects of your business um, nailed. You know, you can put the hand to your heart and say, "These are I'm running the tightest business I can possibly think of, and uh, I'm constantly tweaking and I'm constantly improving, and um, all of these areas of my business. You know, that my customer service is customer centric, customer focused. My warehouse is tip top shape. Those guys are running the business. I don't have to worry about it. I can focus on marketing night and day, and everything else is." assigned and taking care of somebody's taking care of it and I don't have to worry so all of these are the different things if you're drop shipping on uh, your um, operation right now you want to make sure your vendor can can do their job you know that they understand what promotions that you're working and that you are co communicating all of this with them so that you don't um, run into um, issues later on. So these are the things that on the back end that is humming along that people don't see, right? These are the behind the scenes, the not non-sexy stuff, as I would say, that needs to be taken care of. Um, so with that, and thank you for um, being so patient, we're going to dive in to the seven key traffic drivers that can help you grow your business. Next slide, please. So people are always asking me, right, how can I get more sales? How can I get more sales? So these are the seven key things that we're going to touch on today that are what I felt is a proven marketing um, uh, strategy that has worked for big companies, small companies alike, right? And if you're not doing all of these, you're leaving money on the table. Okay, so um, your goal with all of these things, with all these action, these are your action items, right? So we talked about that, your action plan, is to grow and cultivate your customer base. It's no secret that repeat business from the same customers is what keeps a business in business. And this is what adds to your bottom line. So if you do all of these and you do them in a cohesive manner, this is what is going to differentiate you from you know a million dollars this year and two million dollars next year these are the kind of effort that that uh, that you could really see the needle moving so the key thing is that you want to you know figure out how you can get the customers to come back to shop with you the more the more money you make it, it'll make a difference on how much more money you make in effect what you will do is when you uh, implement and execute this is you'll amortize the frequency of the return visit and the more often the re customer returns the smaller your acquisition becomes the smaller your acquisition becomes the more profit you make so let's go dive in and let's go figure out what your customer lifetime value is next slide please and so how do you do all that is you make sure you have your analytics set up and I'm not going to dive I'm not going to go through any of this, this is pretty um, self-explanatory and if you're in new you could find a lot of information on this but these are the key KPIs right key performance indicators that I track that I look at uh, for myself and for my clients so um, 
you know, I, I did it this way so that you, when later on when you print the um, presentations, you can go and check these and make sure that these are the kind of things that you're looking at. Um, I love, um, as Joe said earlier, uh, Google Analytics is free. There's no absolutely no reason why it should not be set up um, on your website. And the key thing about what he said also earlier is that you want to make sure when you set up your Google Analytics that you're capturing all your sales data. That is, you're not just taking it on the lump sum, but you're having every transaction um, you know, information on your website. I've seen that on a client's website where they're not able to see transactions for some reason or another. And those are the kind of things that, you know, it's not very helpful to you if you don't have a complete picture. It's like having ha half your house um, partially built. And I'm going through construction right now, so I kind of understand how that really is like. And so make sure your analytics work. Make sure it's complete. That's the key things. For Yahoo stores, um, if you don't work with Monetus right now, I, I, um, I encourage you to check out Monetus, monetus.net to um, help ask Michael to help you bring in your information to your Google Analytics to make sure your information are complete. Next slide, please. So our everybody's favorite subject, SEO, search engine optimization. So we're not going to dive into search engine optimization in itself because we don't have enough time. There's no way. But SEO is, um, you know, I mean, that's how Google makes a living. That's a lot of people. That's how we all make a living, right? And the key things that you want to make sure is that you have your on-page optimization. These are the things, on-page is everything you can control. So your title tags, your meta description, your product description. And um, there's so much um, on February 24, which is like a few days ago, uh, Google did this big update. And there's a lot of chats in the forum about, um, it's called a farmer's update. And uh, that's what Danny Sullivan of Search Engine Land has dubbed it. And, and what it is is taken away, I mean, some sites have seen their traffic get affected 30, 40, 50 percent. So it's all about having unique content on your product description and the rest of your site, frankly. But mostly, if your product descriptions are manufacturer's description, you're really taking a big risk that if not today, that you're going to be out of the index for duplicate content. So what we used to do is we used to rewrite everything. And we did a lot of dropship product. Over 30% of our products were dropship. And we still rewrote all of those. And you know, there's no. Um, you know, quick and easy way. You either write it yourself or you hire someone to write it for you. And you know, the average price is about five, six dollars for a product rewrite. And um, and you know, and, and, um, and this is you know for very good quality, right? And you work with your writer and you develop a strategy for SEO as well as you know featuring the product benefits to your to the visitor. And the key thing is to make sure that your product description, and the rest of your site, your home page, your, your meta description is really all about inducing, right, I'm going to use that word loosely, inducing your visitor to come visit you. It's about inducing another website to link to you. So you want to give them something that would, would incentivize them to, to do just that. And on, on, uh, there's lots of things that goes on to SEO with on page, right? But another thing that people don't have is sitemaps. You want to make sure that your sitemap is um, submitted to Google and uh, with webmaster, uh, Google Webmaster and uh, tools, and it basically helps the search engine determine what pages are new. If you're going to be updating your site, you want to tell the robots, come visit me again because I got new content. So that's what a site maps will do. And in with search engine optimization, people say, well, I spent all this time, you know, because people sometimes don't mind spending the money, but their biggest gripe, you know, gripe about it is that they're spending so much time. So how do you measure success, right? So I measure success in the number of increased visitors to my site, you know, what's my increased traffic, my increased unique visitors, right? And uh, the number of page views. This, these two metrics alone tells me that my traction for the organic positioning is improving. And you know, the other thing is, of course, 
um, return visitor, right? Your 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 visitors are coming back um, multiple times. They're um, coming back and shopping. So um, those are the three things that I look at. And of course, the most obvious and most gratifying measurement is watching your rankings move up in the organic positioning. And you know, you're beating your competition for the top three spots, right? And if you're not on the top three, top five spot, um, you know, it it's it makes the world a difference. And I will tell you, when we were number one, number two, I mean, we could not keep up with the orders. It was, you know, it was amazing. And, you know, we went through growing pains as well. And a lot of this is what I'm sharing with you is the growing pains that we went through and the things that we I've learned in running and managing the business. Next slide, please. Well, you can't talk about SEO without talking about off-page optimization. And off-page optimization is basically everything that is external to your website, right? So all the SEO, you know, gurus and players out there will tell you, write good content, write good content. And I, you're probably already sick of hearing that. You're probably thinking, you know, you're pulling your hair out, you're going, how much better can I write my content? Well, I don't know the answer to that, but you got to write good content. You know, you write, but mostly you want to write good content you know, that your consumer will buy, write for your customers, you know, and it's a search engine is important too, but you got to write for your customer because once they're on your website, you want them to buy something and that's all about the conversion, right? So um, the good content will attract the links and, and, and at the end of the day, it's all about the backlinks, right? You want to be able to, you know, you know, pass the grandma and grandpa test, right? That you can, you can, Show them the website and be proud to, proud to show it to them that you're you're all you're doing all the up and up you're doing white hat and that that you're building a website that attracts links right so how you determine all of this so enough said on the you know on that um, beating a dead horse on that so you want to make sure that after you all your efforts of writing good content you want to be able to track your backlinks so I've used a SEO Moz tool. Um, a professional version, and uh, I've used a market summary as well. So those are the two things that I have used in the past to keep track of our link building strategy and how to keep track of you know our how many increase of links that are coming in. And not only that, but you, keeping links, um, keeping track of links that your competition is building as well is actually just as important, if not more important. And you know you have to remember. SEO is like an arms race, right? It's it's you know it's a race to the top. You need to build more links than your competitor. But the key is not to do more than the key is not to do so much that it looks so obvious that you're aggressively link building because link building in itself is what Google doesn't want. They want it to be natural. So if you're link building, it's obviously already not natural, right? And we can um, quickly just deviate a little bit. You know, this happened with JC Penny about two, two, three weeks ago. JC Penny got, uh, I mean, Google spanked, you know, in a very bad way. They got a manual intervention that basically took out a lot of their um, listings and rankings. And that's because JC Penny, you know, um, you know, JC Penny, we're going to use them, or their SEO company, whoever was working on JC Penny, uh, you know, they got basically, it was too much, too much of everything, you know, it's too much of a good thing, right? And it was too obvious that they were doing it. And therefore, you know, either a competition uh, thinked on them, or, you know, somebody was poking around, it's like, hey, you know, this is seems fishy, right? The key is you want to be under the radar. That's the key thing. Be under the radar, but be above the competition. So I highlighted the, um, I on my, my newer slide, I highlighted the um, article writing and article database. And I'm going to say that um, for now, with all the, with all the uh, update, which was just two days ago, uh, I would, I would push off on this one and not 
focus on article writing in the sense of off-site, right? Submit, writing articles, submitting it to article databases. So what we used to do is we used to write unique articles and give it to the article databases. But since these guys are all kind of like falling off the search engine right now, and you know, everybody's short on time, what do you work on the most, right? You work on content that's on your website, and hopefully those will attract the links naturally. And other things, you know, there are, that are, you know, I think link exchanges still work on like for like website. You know, your if you're a wedding website, you link to another wedding website. That makes sense, right? It's exchanging resources. And yes, the link may not be as valuable, but it's useful. Okay, in the end, that's what it should be most about, right? And um, but if you're automotive and your wedding, me eh, maybe not so much unless you could tie it together. Um, and you know, let's not overlook directories. So far, these are still acceptable. Best of the web still are respected. Joint, Demos, uh, give it a try. Do it once and then forget about it. Don't 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 worry about it um, in terms of submitting to Demos. Next slide, please. Pay per click. So pay per click. So I. Um, thank you, Joe, for um, working on ad centers earlier. I have like zero experience with Yahoo and Bing, and um, we used to have hired that out. Um, but I have a lot more experience with Google AdWords, and so that's what I'll speak to. Um, Google AdWords, how I used to do it is I used to break my campaigns into keyword buckets and I would you know look at broad match, exact match, and phrase match, right? And but mostly on those keyword buckets, I concentrated on exact match and phrase match because broad match to me was like a runaway train. And you could be spending a lot of money and not getting a good return on them. And I still tested them, but it was a lot smaller bucket, a lot smaller budget. And with, you know, there's a lot of tools on out there about um, Google AdWords and, and pay-per-click and you know Joe's, uh, Joe and uh, David Sadella has written a book on it. The key thing with um, Google pay-per-click is you have to do it. You can't expect to build a store or have a store and not spend any money on um, you know pay-per-click advertising, right? So I mean you don't have to go crazy and our budget used to be very small. We used to do a very small you know um, amount to just give it a try and to try to figure out what keywords are working for us, what keywords are converting for us. And then over time we've increased as us as shown revenue. So the key things that people always ask is like, well how much do I pay, right? So I wanted to answer that question in this slide. How much should you pay? So if your average order right, is $100 let's say, just to make things simple. And your net margin is 50%. So that means that you have, it's, it's $50. And you have a 1% conversion rate, okay? That means for every 50, for every 100 visitors, one person buys. That means you can spend 50 cents. So if you're, you can spend the, I, I know you have costs and all that other operating costs, right? But in the, for this example, you can spend as much as 50 cents to recover your break-even point in terms of your margin for your product. So you pay 50 cents a click, or it's basically $50 divided by 100 visitors. That's how we got the 50 cents. So this is an example of how you can figure out how much you should pay. And of course, you have to figure out what your operating costs and all that stuff too. But for break-even point, this is the formula. Um, let's see, and I think, so I, briefly just touched on this, but you need to make sure you're testing your ad campaigns, right? So ad campaigns meaning that your headlines and your ad, ad copies are, you're, you're swapping them out and you're doing different variations of this, you know, two or three copies, um, testing them against each other to make sure that they are not, um, that they're converting for you and you're constantly tweaking and improving. And the other thing that people don't look at is, um, is the view through conversion rate. View to conversion rate is the most important, it's one of the most important um, conversion rate that you need to look at because view to conversion rate is the 
the cal is the metric that says they didn't come in the first time, but they came in, they came back. So I always look at the conversion rate and look at the view through conversion rate as a metric to show how the ad is doing and um, and uh, and what the ROI is for the return on investment for the for the um, for the campaign. So PPC, the takeaway from this is PPC. You need to be doing a small budget on this and um, and 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 testing and making sure that you can tweak and improve it so that you have different ways of generating traffic and not just relying on the Google organic rankings. Um, next slide, please. So affiliate marketing. So affiliate marketing is something that we've done uh, pretty early on. And, um, and we found actually to be really quite um, successful. Um, with affiliate marketing, right, you, you sign up with the, you know, with the most popular ones, Commission Junction, Link, link Share, Share Sell. I Frank, I personally like Share Sell a lot. Um, um, the the way we found Share Sell was our competitors was on Share Sell, right? And the thing about um, finding um, a network to be in is look to see where your competitors are. So when you do your SWOT analysis, this is something uh, a discovery that you should be stumbling on. And Wherever your competitors are is the most likelihood that the affiliates um, that are interested in that niche is offering, right? So if, they'll, if they pick up your competitor, chances are that they'll probably pick, pick your, your, um, your affiliate marketing program as well and because you share the same customer base. So one of the things that you want to make sure with affiliate marketing, and I learned this the hard way. I lost an affiliate that was generating $25,000 a month for us. And it's because I wasn't paying attention to her. And, and you know, I wasn't paying attention to her numbers. And by the time I woke up and discovered that she was our biggest affiliate, she's already said, hey, I'm not working with you anymore. Bye. Right, and it was too late to salvage that. So I learned that really, that lesson the hard way. It was very costly. So one of the things that I've learned after that, you know, and when I started paying attention, is that you know affiliates, you know, just like people, right? They need love, and they want you to make their life easier. So what can you do to make your their life easier? You want to help them with their graphics. You want to provide them not just the graphics that you put up on the you know network platform that everybody can grab right but you want to extend them you know if they're your top affiliates you want to extend them exclusive graphics you want to extend them um, things that um, banners and ads and things like that that only shows up on their website because they want unique content for their website right and uh, they want um, you know what we found that um, to be successful over time is that whenever we give the affiliates heads up on the promotion, hey, we're working on a promotion. What would you? What do you think your um, your audience, your readership would like to see? You know, they want exclusive coupons. They want uh, heads up on prom for, um, promotion. Maybe um, before you roll out your promotion, you show it to their their people first. And those are the kind of things that you know people feel that that um, affiliates feel that you're you know, you're going out of their way and you're helping them out. And you're helping them out because you're helping yourself, right? And really, at the end of the day, it's all about driving as much sales from different channels. And affiliate marketing is one of them. So some of the tips I have is make sure you give them the graphics, you provide creatives, you know, you may want to pay more for your super affiliates and um, give them, you know, incentive. If you reach over 10,000 uh, this month, I'll give you an extra bonus of X, right? Whatever that number is, you want to make sure you're paying attention and nurturing that relationship, you know, things that like product feeds will help them as well. So whatever it is, product feeds, graphic ads, whatever it is, you want to make sure you're giving them all the tools that's in your arsenal available to you that is available to them. Because you know you guys are basically a team, right? So that's what we have here in this graphics that you are a team and you're letting everybody know you know what's going on with your company and you're working with them, you're engaging them. And they're basically an extension of your team. They're just on the outside. Next slide, please. Thank you, Shauna, for uh, um, moving the slides for me. 
Anytime. I, I'll do it anytime for you. You go to a conference, you need me to be there to push a button, I'm right there for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> push the easy button. That's right. All that's right. right. <laughs> okay. Social media. Oh, my goodness. Can we talk about e-commerce and not talk about social media? So, um, so speaking of Twitter today being a little slow, uh, Twitter. You know, I personally don't have that much experience with Twitter, to be honest, but I know a lot of businesses do use this channel to drive traffic, engage conversations with their customer. I have, I have a personal Twitter account, and when I was working with American Bridal, we had a business Twitter account. And um, in my experience with the business side of it, right, um, there's a lot of, you know, fellow competitors merchants on that you know you follow each other and you know you kind of see what everybody else is doing that's you know one way to do your competitive you know um, um, analysis right who's promoting what what are they doing you know and and to keep up with what's going on in your marketplace but also I find that when when uh, when your customers subscribe to your business account they're a lot more forgiving about you know the promotions you know obviously you want to give great tips and contents and advice and all of that but you know you can be a little bit more um, they're a little bit more forgiving that's my personal opinion about the promotion side and again always give value the promotion should always be about you, your customer you know and not so much you know about you right so you can't you know uh, Facebook you can't get online without reading you know you can't be online or offline nowadays without reading some discussion on social media it's just it just seems like people have you know social media on their brain and perhaps um, you know the key thing about social media right and then initially there was a lot of resistance but uh, now that you know there's over five hundred million people on Facebook you know people are really coming around but it's just like the old days right it's like the old days of the marketplace the, you know physical marketplace you go where your customers are and that's where merchants show up and then there's more people come and so Facebook to me is like a gigantic marketplace on steroids you know that's how I sort of um, um, compare that I have that not that analogy right so the the difference is now the conversations that you're having is very public right so you need to make sure that you have a Facebook strategy and that in your Facebook strategy you are also accounting for how you're going to be you know you have to come up with all the different possible scenarios that your customers will engage you in you know if they complain what are you gonna do you know how are you gonna work with that so that you take as much of that conversation you know offline without you know um, and still seem that and and basically be you know genuinely um, helpful in resolving the issues right because that's the thing about the um, the, the public forum now right it's public forum Facebook is like a public public forum people will not hesitate these days to basically you know call you out so you need to make sure you have a plan to deal with things like that you know good and bad right you like them to call you out when you're doing good so you have you have to have a way to work with people for dealing with uh, the plan when it's um, off uh, when it's online so things that we've done in the past with Facebook is Facebook advertisement and we've um, you know we've done demographics I love the Facebook demographics that uh, they have in in the advertising that we can select um, women who are engaged as an example this is an, uh, an ad that I've ran on uh, women that are engaged between the age of 18 to this uh, 45 I believe so that's what we've done and with that we've um, you know we run a very specific very very specific ads on Facebook a very very tight offer that um, that people you know the brides you know the engaged um, brides to be are very very responsive to so the, we found very I found that in Facebook as in comparison to uh, AdWords um, they're very um, it's all about the offer it's always all 
it's always all about the offer. But in Facebook, it's even more so about the offer because all the ads that are on that, they're not there to look for ads. They're there to, to socialize and comment and, and, and talk to their friends. So if your offer is not compelling, they're just not going to look. Whereas with Google, people are there to search. And therefore, even if your ads are not that great, but it's compelling enough, they'll click it to look because they're there to for a purpose. With Facebook, they're not there for a purpose. They're not there for your purpose. So that's why your offers has to even be more specific with um, Facebook. And they give you all, you know, great thing about Facebook now is they give you all the tools, the likes, the uh, all the different things that are, you know, um, that you can really uh, segment your uh, marketing. And with Facebook fan pages, you know, contests and giveaways, I'm, I'm sure people already know that. Um, but you need to make it interesting because there's so much noise now on Facebook. So how do you make your sweepstakes be more interesting than, you know, let's say the competitor? Or even, you know, uh, even if JCPenney is not your competitor, how do you make your 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 contest be more interesting than J, than JC Penney's. That's an example. That's that's the challenge that um, you have to um, figure out, and that goes back to your whole SWOT analysis, right? Knowing what your strengths are and the strengths of your company is um, how you can formulate these things, and and then uh, on the and at the same time, knowing what your customer wants, thinking like a customer um, will help you and aid you in formulating uh, these activities and plans so that at the end, it's all a cohesive plan. It works back to your, um, your marketing goals and your goals, your sales, sales goals. So one thing I wanted to mention about Facebook is JCPenney over the holidays um, launched their first ever e-commerce platform. And what's unique about the way they did it is um, they uh, use a company called UsableNet, uh, which has experience in mobile and apps. And they develop a technology that let JCPenney basically take their entire product catalog and put it on Facebook. So that's never been done before. It's going to be, you know, people are watching it to see how how they do and it'll be very interesting to see how much um, e-commerce website gravitate and adopt this strategy. So um, that's something that we can all watch and learn moving forward. Um, next slide please. Retargeting. Shana, next slide, please. Retargeting, retarget advertisement. So retarget advertisement is that kind of spooky ad that kind of follows you around. And some people goes, oh, I would never do that. I'm, I, we've done that at American Bridal, and I will tell you it is very effective. Okay, done right, done with the, the, with the correct segmentation, images, and offers, retargeting works. Okay, and what retargeting will do is it reinforces your brand experience, right? It's um, it, you have to make sure that the ads and the messaging and all the imagery ties in with what your website is offering. You want to make sure it's consistent and synergistic so that the visitor's experience is the same, you know, whether they're on your website or they're looking at your ad. You want to make sure that the products and the images and social widgets that you put in there that are geared towards your brand because at this point they have off your site and you want to make sure it's like a little gentle what you want to be is be a gentle reminder you know you don't want to be a creepy um, stalker right so that's the that's the balancing act that is um, that's you know that that you have that you need to work through is that if they look at the backpack you don't want to necessarily show them a backpack you know like it's like wow that backpack is kind of following me around you know so you want to make sure that you offer them something that is similar but not necessarily the exact same item that they that they looked at they previously looked at maybe it's you can kind of look at the recently view pattern and see what they've looked at but not you know be creepy about it that that's the key thing and what I've done with uh, retargeting and the model that we have adapted is to pay um, uh, what do you call that um, CPA so it's pay for acquisition right um, the way we uh, and that 
you know, so we didn't we didn't have to pay the provider until they they produce they you know they, they there's these metrics and logs that you go through and reports that show that the sales came from them. So um, there's ways to do that, and um, I can share the name off um, off the video, um, what off the webinar on who we work with, and um, we want to make you want to make sure that you, you you're looking at those reports and making sure that when you attribute the sales to your uh, retargeting partner that it is really earned by them and not um, and not something that you know that you could you could have done on your own so you don't want to pay commission on something that you could have done on your on your own so that's the way that's the model that we've done and there's not a lot of partners there's not a lot of retargeting partners that do that um, so you you need to you might have to do some search but if you're looking for one um, I will um, contact me and I'll share that information with you Next slide, please. Miss Shirley, I hate to do yes. this. It is 3 o'clock, so here's okay. what I'm thinking. Do you want to just skip to the long list of marketing dues? Um, sure. And sure. then we'll do that. And then I'll make sure to put your slide up on your rebroadcast page so that way they can see all the rest of the information. And yes. then um, I'll let you answer their questions um, in the chat. You, you can respond to it while we do the next webinar, and that way everybody gets answered too. Absolutely, Perfect. absolutely. Perfect. And I apologize again. Oh, no, 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 no. For no, the technical no. difficulties. No, you know what? These things happen, and we all understand, and everybody's wonderful. So we'll just do that, and then we'll get Phaedra on. Um, and, then, and then you'll have all this information, and it is great information. And um, I will ask Miss Shirley to come on the um, on our radio show and finish off the rest of this uh, very, very soon. So that way you guys still get all that education and insight that is not on those um, on those slides. So I will beg her to do that. So all right, I'll go back on mute so we can finish that up. <laughs> so we skip a whole bunch of things, which is mobile marketing, web analytics, and a way to track your uh, marketing channels, right? So this is sort of like the summary of all of those things that m your action plan. And, and in itself, if you do them separately, you'll definitely see some um, increase in revenue. But my, in my mind, and, and from my, what I've seen over the years, is when you do them all together, and mobile marketing is new, obviously, and social media is new, but there's no escaping it. You need to be present where your customers are. And, and if, you, if you have a strategy and action plan for every single one of these, right, you, you will see that you're not only going to move the needle, you're going to move it a lot. You know, this is the difference between in increasing your sales 20,000, 30,000, you know, to 40, 50, 60, 100,000, you know, within a short amount of time. And there's a lot to do, and that's why I have this graphic guy here, you know, um, my cousin helped me whip it up. It's, there's a lot to do, and you need to develop a team and, uh, to help you. Right, and and, you, and initially you do everything yourself. There's no there's no doubt. But if you with within each one, if you develop a process and a systematic way of working on it and tracking it and measuring it, so that you can shift your resources um, to the ones that are working. You know, and sometimes it works this month and doesn't work next month. But you can shift your resources as you you know, as you go. You know, not not every month, but quarterly you review these quarterly so that you can see where you're getting traction and improving so there's a lot to do uh, no doubt um, and uh, you know a lot to do for one person the key is to develop a team and develop a team to take care of all the areas that you don't like to do and then develop a team to help you work on the the aspects of your business um, that you do like to do. And for me, that's marketing. I love the marketing aspect of a business and growing the business. And um, you want to make sure that you're in all of these uh, channels um, to be present there because that's where your customers are hanging out. And lastly, next slide, please. 
So minding the business, right? So we're doing all of that that you need to do in terms of the marketing. Operationally, you still have to be mindful of your cash flow. You have to be constantly reviewing your profit and loss. You have to make sure you're, you know, you're always tweaking your operation so it's solid. So these are the kind of things that you know we do, you know, consciously and unconsciously. And uh, you just need to make sure that you are conscious of it, you know, and not sort of on autopilot. With that, uh, thank you for um, having me again. And uh, the last slide, one more. Yeah. This is my contact information. And um, let me know um, if, I, if you have any questions. Oh, just such wonderful, wonderful information. Thank you so very much. Um, there's lots of questions on Twitter. I don't know if you'll be able to scroll back, um, and, but they absolutely loved you. And um, in the right-hand side, hopefully uh, um, you'll be able to look at those questions. If not, we, what we will do is uh, get those list of questions to you. Um, if you don't get your answers, um, then please get in touch with Shirley. Email her, um, and she'll you know she'll get to those questions for you. She's got a lot of great information. Make sure you follow her on Twitter as well. And again, I will I'll do my best to get her on our radio show so she can give us more education. And uh, Susan says, "Wonderful, these have been so great." So that's just lots of feedback coming in, Shirley. It's just absolutely. Thank wonderful. you, everybody, for being uh, patient. And and um, it's great um, to uh, be able to share all of this information with you. And good luck 